We last visited in 06 when the Red Tree came out. Yeah. Now it's 09. So let's talk about the record. Uh, S Steve has now joined your band. Yeah. Peter left. Yeah. How's that uh, affected things? It's great. Steve is a good. Uh, he's a good force to have. He's um. He's a really super positive guy, and we've known him for. I've probably known him. I knew him before uh, Monin was even a band. Uh, we each played in our own different bands. Um, so when it came time to looking for a new drummer, uh, it really he was one of the first guys that came to mind. Because we, we just wanted to have someone that we already knew was a friend and was a great player. And he, is, he really is one of, the, one of the best drummers we know. So, um, and, and Peter, our, our old drummer, uh, was also one of the best drummers we knew. Um, so it was funny because when Steve joined the band, it was really like uh, he felt like he was stepping up to a big challenge. Because Peter was such a creative drummer, and um, but he's great, man. What even just the way he, he plays the old songs to like what he comes up with for the new songs, just it helped us kind of go uh, do some different things that we never never really tried before. Yeah, it's awesome. It's kind of like we feel reborn a little bit, like we get to try uh, try and do everything over again. You know, like um, all the touring. We went to Germany. Germany was his first tour uh, with us, and. Um, it was funny that like just seeing him react to everything it made us feel like us excited again because we were like yeah this is exciting <laughs> let's go let's go check out this tourist stuff like it's it's awesome it's just a good force to have like uh, I feel like very connected musically connected and all creative in the same spot so it's good rejuvenated I guess exactly yeah yeah, yeah. All right, so speaking of the new record, how have you kept it? Wh which vault are you hiding it? It hasn't leaked yet. I was thinking about this today. Wh wh why has the record not leaked? Because we're that, we're that secret. We're, we're the CIA and Secret Service, they got nothing on us, man. Nothing. Oh, yeah. I don't think I Da Vinci Code, no. they should have <laughs> just put it in my pants. No one would ever find it. Maybe that's where the record is. It is. Friend. Did it is. <laughs> All right. So and I uh, even used that pickup line on you when I first met you. Hey, haven't I seen you somewhere before? Where's this going? Where's this interview going? Kenny Lord Bridges, no. stop talking. <laughs> I'll put it in the new question. So your past three records have been notorious for having really long song titles. Like today yeah. you played A Million Reasons, and you're like, I'm not even going to mention how long it is. Good song, by the way. The new one has really short titles. What was the motivation behind that? Why the record has short titles? <laughs> Why, hippie? Because, man, that, that long title stuff, that was played out, man. We took it to the limit, and we said, we got to dial it back a bit. Yeah. And, just, and we just didn't know. Like, people were yelling out songs for us to play, and we're like, what song is that? I don't even know. You're, like, screaming some paragraph at me? I don't know. So we just yeah, kept it Yeah, like, simple. really, it got to the point where we had no idea what songs people were calling out. So like, and, and when I would try to say a full title, I would screw it up. And it got to the point where we're like, what are we doing? Because, really, it was like a... Like a lot of our lives, it's just an inside joke. Like uh, we would leave song titles to the last thing we'd have to do in the artwork, and basically we would come up with these long titles that related to the song, but at the same time we're also just pretty ridiculous. Um, it was more just to make ourselves laugh. But then we realized we're like, this is kind of our lives, and we shouldn't really be laughing at it. <laughs> uh, so it, it really the only place to go was for us was to make the shortest titles. Shortest yeah. titles. Yeah, yeah. It's a new beginning. Starting fresh, you know. We we were up there. I saw a, a list of the longest song titles, and um, uh, the frightening reality. Oh yeah, that. Was frightening reality of sometimes knowing that you grow up and being scared of it, and then not wanting to grow up. Dot com. I don't know what the song tells. Yeah, I don't even know what the song tells. Can I see that CD? It's on there. So this song, the frightening reality of the fact that we will all have to grow up and settle down one day. In a list of longest song titles, uh, we were up there in like the top 20 of all time, wow. only uh, beaten by uh, many others. But uh, the number one was like something like 54 words or something yeah. like that. Uh, I can't remember who it was, but really, <laughs> it, the joke's over. They're going for the, the record. The joke is over. As soon as Fall Out Boy started making really long song, song titles and then became a huge rock and roll band, we were like... Yeah, let's bail on that. <laughs> Good choice. So, uh, Kenny, you and Eric played in Hunter recently. Has that affected how you perform in Monet? Or is it affected? Yeah. No, see, the thing is, like, it's more... Hunter, for anyone who doesn't know, Hunter is a... Uh, it's pretty much just a brutal, straight-edge, 
one part, drunk, another part, father, another part, crazy maniac, another part, um, awesome drummer, another part. It's just this mix. It's like a hardcore punk band, but it's like, it's just the five of us are all into such different music. And it's uh, myself and Eric. I play bass. Eric sings. Our good friend Greg Dawson, who uh, we record a ton of stuff with at BWC Studios. Um, he wrote a lot of the songs. He plays guitar. A good friend, Billy. Uh, Billy Curtis plays guitar. He played in the Band of Hearts Club. And then Jordan Hastings from uh, Alexa on Fire plays drums. So it's more. It's really just a fun thing more than anything. And we really don't get to play. We've released uh, a 7-inch. We're releasing another one on September 8th. And uh, it really, other than that, it's just like if we get to play three shows a year, that's great. It's right. always so wicked, though. All right. It's uh, actually good. Play. It's really good. It gets me so pumped. I'm in the band, but I enjoy listening to it. Strip. All the songs are like a minute long. Yeah. They're just brutal punk. Brutal just punk. destroy your face. Blast beats. Yeah, pretty much. It's awesome. We're, uh, we're, we're Monine's doing that uh, CD release show at the uh, Horseshoe on September 15th. It's a free show, and Hunter's going to play as well. But even though it's Menin's CD release show, Hunter's going to go on last because who wants to play after Hunter, for real? real. Bodies are breaking. (laughs) Spines are snapping. Like, why would we ever play after that? So it's going to be fun. All right, so uh, you mentioned earlier on about the maturing and simplifying things. So I, I, I look at the two album arts here, and they're very different. And the new one's even more different. Is the there artwork? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it's very, like, it's an actual photo. I, I read the story behind that. Is there any meaning behind that lamppost thing for you? Or Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, I want to, like, we, we do the design on, on all the records, and I feel each record has just gotten better and better design-wise. Like, I'm just, especially this new record, I'm really, really proud of it. And um, my good friend Justin Ellsworth, who works at Dynalon Records, me and him work together close, and just making it exactly what I saw in my head, because all the pictures and all the artwork from it are all uh, pictures that I took from when I was over in England last summer. Um, And that's where I was when I was writing a lot of the lyrics for the book. For the book. For the book. It's now a book. The CD's a book, (laughs) Kiffy, so you know. uh, The booklet was uh, about 12 pages. It's now 46. (laughs) It's a small book. It's a novelette. But uh, (laughs) anyways, um, and, and I really wanted the CD and the packaging to really mean something. So all the pictures and everything are all from taken from when I was writing the lyrics for the songs. And if I found a spot that I found inspired by and I would sit down and start writing the lyrics, uh, I would take out my camera and I would take a picture of exactly what I would be looking at if I brought my head up out of my book. So I just felt that that was a just really meaningful towards lyrically what this record is. This record is... uh, lyrically very close to our lives whereas the last one I was seeing a lot about um, the outside world this is definitely more us uh, within the world rather than just looking from the outside in it's more like well we realize uh, everything we do everything we look at everything we touch uh, we affect and just want to make sure that like the title says the world I want to leave behind when we all leave this world and leave it for the people behind us how do we want to leave it what kind of legacy do we want to leave what kind of how do you want to be remembered it's all like important and it's all like little things that we don't have to really worry about but at the same time it's all really important and and I think like packaging wise uh, when I was walking around one day in London this is London England uh, I was just in a real weird mood of like thinking about where I was in, in, in our lives and what we're doing and I remember just stumbling upon that street where I found that lamppost and like Here's this lamppost that is really, when it comes down to a really beautiful piece of art. It's, but what is it doing? It's lighting up a street for people to walk down or drive by. And, but there's so much detail in it. There's so much, there's like these gold crazy fish with these like crazy little faces in there. And uh, you got the red roses and there's bird poo on it. The paint is chipping away and it's just who knows how long it's been there. And it just kind of really hit me. It's just like, there's so much beauty in the world that we never even really notice or realize because you walk by it without taking a second glance. So that just kind of, it just spoke to me. It was just, and it was just an image from a video I was taking. And as I was loading into my computer, long story short, I'm only talking forever about it, but really this is, the record's just coming out. So this is the first time I ever got to talk about the artwork. Um, so when we were going through a video that I had taken in London, that exact image uh, that, that picture was inspired by 
um, was just a still frame of the first frame of the video with the cars going by all blurry. So as soon as I saw that, I was like, I think that's the record cover right there. So I called my friend Andy, and I Google mapped him that area, and I'm like, you got to go find this JPEG picture I'm going to send you and retake it. And my good friend Andy went and did that. He took uh, took that photo, and it came out beautiful, perfect. So uh, it was really fate. This All the packaging, all the art, just it really everything means something. It's not just some crappy picture that we found on the internet. Like Everything on it means something. So Brilliant. All right, so looking forward to the album then. It comes out 15th. The 15th, so yeah, on Dine Alone Records words? here in Canada. So Last words. Yeah, we're excited. We're very excited. All right, great. Yeah. Thanks a lot.